World Cup winner for juniors last year. Oh! If I could go back to the first World Cup and talk to Finn, I would uh, tell him to slow down a little bit. You need more experience before you're able to win. I still got a few years ahead of me, and uh, hopefully I can figure it out. There's a school of thought that decrees that you are only as good as your last race. That's simply not true. If I could go back and talk to myself before the first World Cup of the season, I would say you have to trust your training, you have to trust your team, and just do the best you can at every race. Race long enough and you'll realize there'll be good days and there'll be bad days. Well, friends, for the final chapter of our story, we've got a tale of a bad day turned good. And a good day turned great. Last World Cup of the season, race number seven. Yeah, the last World Cup is always a bit tricky. It's an opportunity to try to be consistent and stay where you are or move up in the overall. If you've come this far with us, you've probably got an inkling of what's at stake here in France. While the men's overall DH title may already be a fait accompli, in the women's XC World Cup overall, everything remains to play for. The final race of the World Cup season, the last chance saloon. I really like La Bresse. I think that the weather changing throughout the weekend was kind of added like something different to the course. This year, all the tracks have been dry. So having something that was like, oh, it's going to rain, really threw kind of like a screwball into it. Less than ideal weather? Check. Broody awkwardness plus berms that require perfect pressure. Yep, got that too. Young Finn versus Gwyn versus Bruni versus Hart versus Pierron. The stage is set for a classic Clash of the Titans. Until this guy showed up. Martin Mays, fresh off a win of the Enduro World Series in uh, Whistler, and showing that he's pretty damn good on a downhill bike as well. So 3.4 up then for him. If he crosses the line, even more, over four seconds for Martin Mays. That's a time that might stand there a little while. Well said, Rob Warner. So, while our young Belgium Enduro specialist hangs out in the hot seat, let's crank the drama up a couple notches. This race is very important to me. I'm behind Yolanda in the overall standings, but if I have a really good day and if she has a really bad day, I can still grab the overall victory. It's the final World Cup race of the year. There's only one game plan for me, and that is full gas. If Langvad wins and Neff finishes lower than third, Langvad will leave here as the overall World Cup winner. Neff already sprinting out that gate hard. She has to sustain that, though, for around the next hour and a half. Langvad not far away from her. I was trying to chase down Yolanda at the very beginning. I could see that I was gaining a little bit on her in the climbs, and that motivated me a lot, so I just kept on chasing, chasing, chasing. Well, this is encouraging from Langvad. Just 20 seconds, she's cut back into Neff. What's happened here? What has happened? No way! A flat rear tire. So Betty's in the lead right now. Langvad second. Back to fourth now then. Back to fifth for Yolanda Neff. Right now, Yolanda Neff will not leave here as the World Cup overall winner. Annika Langvad will. Kate okay, Courtney down in seventh place at the moment. First year elite, eighth overall in the World Cup at the moment. No way. Langbad, yes. Rear flat for Annika Langbad. Unbelievable. This is crazy. Batty pushes through then, and now Batty leads this World Cup. No, it's a front flap. So back to fourth place, and the tire is gone, and Neff fighting that front wheel. She's going to lose more time now as she gets to that feed zone. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's chaos. It's chaos out there. And Neff starting to look a little bit distraught there, but can she re about herself again? She has to. She lost so many motivation because of these flat tires. 
So Langrad retakes the lead with Neff in fourth place. That's not good enough for Yolanda Neff to take the overall title now as things stand. It's obviously really hard to have a bigger mechanical issue, like a flat, and still have a strong performance, but it is possible, and there's a lot of laps to make up time. The more confidence you have, the more fun it is. The more fun it is to ride, the more at ease you feel, but in the end, you have 90 minutes, so you can always recover, you can always let your legs do the talking and always go to the front. She's back, Yolanda's back. All of a sudden, Neff back in the overall World Cup winning position, just like that. I think it's fair to say, we've saved the best race of the season till the very end. And look at the gap she's pulled out of everyone on that descent now. Even two flat tyres can't stop Yolanda Neff today. It's unbelievable, we've never seen a race like it. Yolanda Neff is your 2018 UCI World Cup overall winner. It's far too easy to distill racing bicycles down to the digits. Time, distance, heart rate and wattages are indeed important. But at this level, it's also a game of something you can't measure with numbers. How bad do you want it? I think confidence comes in different ways for a lot of people. Big news then, the return of Aaron Gwynn. If I'm feeling strong and healthy, like I can ride 100%, that gives me confidence. No! Gwyn goes down! That was unbelievable! Well, Aaron Gwyn goes across the line in 39th. Danny Hart, then. He is one gifted rider, and he's up by nearly half a second. Now I try to take confidence from the process and not from results. 3.3 back now, so it was costly. Looking better and better for Martin Mays. Louis Bruni leaves the gate, the winner of the last race. I was excited, especially after Monsantan, you know, I felt like, OK, the confidence is back. Oh, he's up by over a second. Well, this is looking good. Nearly three seconds back. Could it be the rain has stopped? The track's getting stickier, I don't know, but it could be that fifth place for Luke Brunin. Next, it is Amory Pierron, number one plate, leaves the gate then. If this was a Hollywood movie, our World Cup overall champ would put an exclamation point on his season-long dominance by winning the final stop of the series. Firstly, we ride for fun and Funny can be a key to be fast. That's my key. It's got to be great, but nearly a second for every pair on that. This is not a Hollywood movie. Onto this long stray, it's not going to be far away, this one. He's every oh, he goes down. He crosses the line, and Martin Mays wins his first ever World Cup. The conditions suits me pretty well today, and uh, I was feeling confident. Didn't have too much pressure, and uh, I just rode with the strongest I could. When Finn and Kate entered the elite ranks, five months and three continents ago, Nobody promised it was going to be easy. But some things, you simply have to experience for yourself. It's never easy to do a first year in the elite, and I think Finn killed it this year. It was not easy for him to have so many people expecting him to do well because he was uh, fast in juniors. That was the goal this year, to be top 20 overall and just have consistent top 20 results. I ended up 15th overall, which is better than we expected, and I'm pretty happy with it. He's really hungry for it. You know, he's got mad skills. He's successful already. He's got a strong head. Yeah, there's no doubt he'll be somewhere near the top. If not this season, it's coming. Kate Courtney, 
Another strong ride for her. Kate, she's learned so much in this year, and I'm actually very confident she's gonna take all of that and make even more improvement. For me, the goal was a top 10 and had a really solid ride. Courtney's had a fantastic season inside the top 10 again. And finishing seventh uh, kept me in eighth on the World Cup overall, which is a huge step for me. I think it's a really solid start and something that I can be proud of. America hasn't really, you know, no disrespect to the riders that have been good, but they're kind of waiting for the, the country that invented the sport to, to be right back at the top, you know what I mean? Right back at the top, winning and winning. And, and I think everyone's expecting Kate to do that. You know, for me, the results are one thing, but I really, really am motivated to see how far I can go. And I'd always rather try and fail and then try to improve and make it happen than to just not try at all. I put my life on the line for this life. I wear my heart on my sleeve for this life. Waking up from a dream is this life. Do my words cut deep through this mic? Seven races in the rear view mirror. The overall World Cup may have proven out of reach for our young protagonists, but there still remains one major accolade up for grabs. The rainbow striped jersey of the UCI Mountain Bike World Championships. Here comes Kate Corley up to the finish line. She's going to take the win. She is your 2018 UCI World Champion in her very first attempt. There's a cliche that nice guys and girls finish last. But if we've learned one thing after a season filled with the profane and the profound, it's that it's not necessarily the case. Hi, ah, that's a Sony. I was thinking you're running Canon. It's a Sony? Yeah, it's a Sony. That's oh, a Canon lens, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like same riding a specialized front end and a commensal back end. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see a third season of Fast Life, but this time back with the real man. I think we should do next year. Finn has a new career in vlogging, so we'll leave him the vlogs, and we come back at... Uh, Wait, I want to do Life. this too. Yeah, you can. You have to choose. You chose vlogs. So season three with Bruni is back. Season Stay tuned. three. Hey guys, I'm Finn Isles, professional mountain biker. Thanks for watching Red Bull Bike. Click here to subscribe and watch more awesome videos. Perfect. Oh my god! Come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god.